What's up guys, Xbox Mod 360 here, and in today's video, I'm going to be bringing you guys a review of the Laser 303. The Laser 303 is a Chinese-made green laser pointer, and they're relatively cheap. Most of the time you can get one for under $20, including shipping, and they go by a couple different names. Sometimes they'll be called SD Laser 303 or JD Laser 303. They're pretty much all the same thing, though. And there's also the Laser 301 and the Laser 302, but these are essentially the same exact laser pointer. So what you're getting is a metal laser pointer that runs at about 532 nanometers, and what that refers to is the wavelength of the laser. The beam of the laser is green and it can burn stuff, we'll talk about that later. What you get with this package is the charger and the battery. And there's a million different Laser 303 listings out there online, but what you get with it is essentially always the same. You'll get the laser itself, a battery, a charger, and a star attachment. And obviously there are some different listings that will give you cases or more attachments as well, but those are probably going to cost you a little bit over $20. And one important thing that is not included most of the time is laser safety glasses. I know I'm not going to be able to convince all of you to get these glasses, but I would highly suggest it, especially when you're trying to burn stuff. You have to stare at the beam for an extended period of time, and you can really hurt your eyes doing that. I would definitely suggest even getting a cheap pair like these. They're only about $5 on eBay, and they're efficient for a laser of this strength. If you go up any higher, you might want to get a better pair. But these are definitely a must-have if you intend on burning stuff, because you'll have to stare at that focused beam for extended periods of time, and you definitely don't want to risk permanent eye damage. And the next thing I wanted to talk about is this laser's labeling. They state that it's under 200 milliwatts, and that is basically, that doesn't mean anything. Anybody who has researched or owned Chinese laser pointers before knows that the labeling and advertising of milliwatts is basically meaningless. At least on these cheap Chinese ones, because they almost never accurately label it. I mean, yes, they are right that it is under 200 milliwatts, but they don't tell you what it is really. So don't take milliwatts into huge consideration when you're looking at these different laser pointers. Most of the Laser 303s are burning lasers though because they have that focusing lens and they are strong enough to burn. And another aspect of the Laser 303 I wanted to show you guys is that they actually have a key switch on the bottom that you can make it dead and nobody will be able to use it. They claim that this is due to federal regulations that they're required to have a key switch on the bottom, but I'm not sure how truthful that is because I do have a laser that's equally as powerful as this one that doesn't have a key switch, so I don't know, it is a cool little feature to have, I guess, if you don't want somebody using your laser. And as far as the battery goes, it's pretty self-explanatory, the bottom unscrews and you put it in there. This top part right here unscrews as well, and that lets you get access to the lens itself. This is the first lens that the laser passes through. It's very fragile. You do not want to scratch that or get dust on it at all. So I, would, I wouldn't even take off that top part that I just unscrewed right there unless you really have to. Because if you scratch that lens at all, you won't be able to replace it or fix it. And to use the laser, it's pretty simple. You just hold down this button right here. I'm not a big fan of this button. I like buttons that you only have to press once to activate and once to shut off. With the buttons you have to hold down, I feel like it gets less intense if you don't hold it as hard and more intense if you do. I don't know, it's just my opinion. The top part of this laser screws off, and that's actually the star attachment. Try to avoid dropping it like I just did right there. Sometimes the manager will ship it screwed on like they did with mine right here, and sometimes they'll ship it on the side. But once you have that unscrewed, you'll have access to your laser's focus now. The top part of this unscrews a little further. This doesn't unscrew all the way, this won't come off, so don't try to make it come off. Having this focus feature is what allows this laser to burn. Stronger lasers will be able to burn on any intensity, but because this is a weaker laser, it's a Chinese cheap laser, it does burn on a very specific intensity, so you will have to focus it at the right distance. I'll show you guys how to do that later on in the video, and to put the star attachment back on, you just screw it on on top of the focus, and then you spin it to make the star spin. One of the things I love most about this laser pointer is the fact that it has a rechargeable battery, as opposed to all those other laser pointers that just eat up AAAs and AA batteries. The battery that's included is an 18650 4000 milliamp battery. You can replace that if yours goes dead at any time. But to be honest with you, the replacement battery is probably going to be the same price as the whole laser bundle itself, so you're better off just buying a whole new bundle. To put the battery in the charger, it's pretty simple. You just pull back that piece of metal and match positive with positive, negative with negative, and plug it into the wall. I don't really have much to say about the charger itself, it does seem to be cheap made, but I haven't really had any issues with it. The battery usually does come charged with this laser, so you can use it right out of the box. I'm not sure in the exact charging time, I'm sure it says in the listing though. So if you do go on to buy this laser, just check the listing for the charging time on the battery. And if it isn't listed there, just contact the seller of the laser and they should be able to tell you. Putting the battery in is pretty simple, I'm pretty sure there's a diagram somewhere inside the laser that says positive and negative, but if you put the battery in and it doesn't work or it doesn't screw in, then just flip it and try it on the other side and it should work fine. 
Using the key feature is also really simple, you just put it in and you turn it. They usually ship it on the on position, so it should work right out of the box, but if it doesn't work and you've tried both battery positions, also try doing the key switch. You don't need to leave the keys in the laser in order to use it, all you need to do is switch it to the on position and then pull the keys out, same thing if you want to turn it off. And before I show you guys some demonstrations of the laser's beam and the star attachment, I'm going to show you guys quickly how to burn stuff with the laser. Make sure you have your safety glasses on, and actually the perfect item to test out the burning feature on is the charger itself because it's made out of a very cheap black plastic. What you're going to do is hold your laser pointer in a very steady position, maybe 4 or 5 inches away from the charger. And once you have it in a steady position, you're then just going to hold down the on button so that the beam is going, and you're going to focus it more and more until you start seeing smoke coming up from the charger. And don't be worried that you're going to burn and destroy your charger because you're not. You're just going to leave little, little tiny scratches on the charger. So what you're doing basically is steadying the laser, keeping it at one distance, holding it in the on position, and just focusing it more and more until you reach the point where it's burning the charger. And like I said, all it's really doing is leaving little little tiny scratches on the charger, it's not destroying it really. And once you reach the best point where it's burning at its quickest from that distance, you can actually do something like carve your initials into the charger if you wanted to. But the reason I burn the charger first is because I usually use the charger as an example to find the perfect focus point where it's burning from a certain distance. And once I have it focused in perfectly to burn stuff, I'll then use it on maybe a match or a balloon or something like that. This will only burn dark objects, so if you have a light colored balloon, you might have to color part of it with a sharpie to make it black. And the same thing goes with matches too. Try to get matches if you want to light a match with this laser. Try to get ones that have darker tips. A white one is next to impossible to light with this laser. And even the darker colored matches will probably still take you a minute or two to get to light. This laser isn't really incredible at burning, but it does burn. It is good for the price you pay. But you're not going to be able to do things like burn straight through CD cases or quickly cut through electrical tape or stuff like that. That's more of the blue lasers and the higher class green ones. And what I've been showing you guys on the screen right here is that some of these laser 303s won't exactly look the same as each other. The one on the top is one that I got a year ago and the one on the bottom is the one that I just bought. So don't be concerned if your laser doesn't look exactly like mine does. One big issue I have with the laser 303s is durability. I found that the lens on the Laser 303 deteriorated a little bit quicker than I would have liked. And what I mean by deteriorate is that the beam, the little dot that it produces, got bigger and bigger as it got more and more scratched and got more and more stuff on it. It's not easy to clean either. When you try to clean it, you end up scratching it a little bit more. So I don't know, maybe that was just me because I used mine so much in that period of time, but if you do want to clean it, I would suggest being very, very careful and use something that you know is not going to scratch it. And even then, I would still be very cautious. So now comes the fun part, I'm going to bring you guys some examples of the laser in different settings. This is what it looks like in a fully lit room. And it's really tough to capture the beam on camera, but the beam is just barely visible in a fully lit room from the user's point of view. Nobody else is really going to be able to see the beam itself in a fully lit room, but the dot is extremely visible indoors. And although this room looks completely dark, it's actually just a dimly lit room and the beam is very very visible in dimly lit rooms. The user will be able to completely see the beam very well and other people sitting in the room will be able to partially see the beam. And I'm going to show you guys what that star attachment looks like indoors. It's really, really cool. It makes about a hundred different little laser dots. And by spinning the little star attachment on the top of the laser, you can make them all join up into one or split up. And it's even cooler at night. I'm going to show you guys me turning my entire garage into basically just one big laser light show. So the star attachment is definitely a must have with the laser 303. You can create some really, really cool effects. And I'm pretty sure there's some other listings out there online that have the Laser 303 with even more attachments. So if you found the star attachment pretty cool, you might want to get the bundle that has a couple other laser tips to it. This is what it looks like outdoors in broad daylight. It's hard to tell in the video, but that little green dot is actually completely visible during daylight and it's reaching the trees that are in the back of the yard. Obviously the beam itself isn't visible, but that's still really impressive to me that the green laser will shine and you'll be able to see it even in daylight. And this right here is one of my favorite effects. If you get a sink full of really hot water that's steaming, you'll be able to see the laser really good. The same thing happens if you have it above a fire pit. But this is definitely the best one, and this is on a foggy day. You get this same exact effect at night, but it's kind of hard to film the laser itself at night. This is on a foggy day, and the laser beam is completely visible. It's actually even more visible than it is on the camera. If you have a really foggy day, or you just go out really early in the morning when there's still a lot of fog and mist, you can see this thing incredibly. It looks like a lightsaber at this time. And it looks just like that at night too, if you're not somewhere that's well lit. So overall, even though this laser has problems with long-term durability and the power of the laser may not be accurately represented, I still give it a really, really good rating. 
It's probably one of the best 10 to $15 toys I've ever bought. It's really, really fun, and I'm not going to give you guys a whole speech on what you shouldn't do with it. It's kind of common knowledge, you know. Don't use it while you're driving or in a car. Don't aim it at people's eyes. It's just really, really common sense, so don't do anything stupid with it if you do buy it. I really like the metal build, I really like how durable it is on the outside even though that lens may not be too durable. The metal feel to it, it just really makes it feel like it's worth more than what you're paying for. So I'm going to give you guys the link to the exact listing where I bought mine. I bought mine off eBay and if the link goes down or the seller just discontinues it, I would just suggest going on eBay and searching Laser 303. You'll find dozens of results in the 10 to $15 range. I would look for one that specifies that it can burn, and I would also look for one that's being sold out of the US because you don't want to wait forever for shipping. And I would also double check to make sure it comes with at least a charger, a battery, and a star attachment. The reason I tell you guys to do eBay is because these cheap Chinese products aren't always the most reliable, so if you do get something that's a dud, eBay has really good refunds and buyer protection. But anyways guys, that's going to wrap up this review of the Laser 303. I really hope to do more laser reviews soon because I find them really, really cool. And if I get my hands on a higher powered laser, I might do a things to burn with a laser video as well. But anyways guys, if you found this video helpful in any way, hit that like button below. And if you're new to our channel, hit that subscribe button for more amazing reviews. And as always guys, thank you for watching from Xbox Mod 360.